Hi, I'm Sean Allen, and I created this program to provide you some helpful knowledge of selling your home. Over the next few minutes, we'll be discussing some important issues that should be of serious concern to anyone trying to sell their home without the aid of a real estate professional like me. We'll be talking about the costs involved as well as some real marketing tips. Now be sure and stay tuned after the video to see our list of sponsors and preferred business partners. Now grab your pen and paper, get ready to take some notes. Let's get going. If you really want to sell your home for the highest possible price in the shortest amount of time, you'll have to work very hard over the next few weeks to accomplish your goal. There are many steps taken before you make it to the closing table. Here are some questions you'll be concerned about while your house is on the market. How long will it take to sell my home? How should I market my home? How should I show my home? How much could it cost me to sell my own home? Now while there are no exact answers to these questions, let's break each question down and look at them one at a time. The first step to go over is, how long could my house be on the market? While some properties sell the first day they hit the market, other properties stay on the market a year or even more. The factors that determine the sale of a property are, first, the asking price, second, the terms, third, the location, and finally, fourth, the condition of the property. Unfortunately, there are no solid statistics for length of time on the market for homes sold without the aid of a real estate professional. We do know that the average length of time using a real estate professional is about 90 days. We also know that it does, on average, take much longer for owners to sell their own homes. The length of time will depend on the price, the location, and the condition. It will also depend on any special terms you offer. For example, owner financing, carrying a second mortgage or assisting in closing costs for the buyer. Other factors are how you market and show the property. The next question to consider is, how should I market my property? Good marketing is critical for getting the highest number of qualified buyers. There are many things that influence potential buyers when shopping for a home. But keep in mind that there are always things that are beyond your control. For instance, you cannot change the physical features of the property. In other words, changing the size or shape, adding bedrooms or bathrooms would be cost prohibitive. You cannot change the location of the property. You cannot change the competition. This means that if someone in the neighborhood decides to sell well below market value, there's nothing you can do about it. You cannot control interest rates. The higher the rates go, the harder it may become to sell your home. And finally, local economic trends and community changes also have an impact on selling your home. For example, job creation means more buyers looking for a place to live, while massive layoffs or base closures might have a devastating effect on the market value of your home. All of these things affect the saleability of your home and are beyond your control. However, there are things within your control, positive things you can do to help your home sell. First, price your home competitively the first time. Second, make your home show like a model home. Third, have a good marketing plan in place to reach as many buyers as possible. To price your home competitively, get a comparative market analysis from a local real estate professional like me. Go to seanallen.com to order yours free of charge or call my office at 373-2893 for more information. You can also pay for a full appraisal, which range from $300 to as much as $500. But be careful, these may or may not reflect the current market conditions or possible selling price. How should I show my home? The way your property compares to competing listings is a direct reflection on the saleability and one of the few things you can control. We've all heard the term curb appeal and curb appeal makes a huge difference. In fact, I've had buyers tell me, you know, don't even bother stopping the car. We don't need to see this one. The yard should be well-groomed and uncluttered. The entryway and front door should be clean and freshly painted if needed, and the windows should be clean and shiny. Remember, there's only one chance for a first impression. The inside should also be clean and tidy. The bed should be made and the kitchen and bathroom should be sparkling clean. Everything should be put in its proper place, including the kids' toys. If you know some small repairs needed, go ahead and do them now. Small things like leaky faucets should be repaired and cracked switch plates replaced. You see, the buyers might think that if these small things are not well maintained, maybe the big, expensive things need repair too. 
you might want to consider calling a local professional home inspector like Pillar to Post. A home inspection is a great tool for a seller and might uncover defects you didn't even know existed and avoid a potential legal battle after closing. The home should be bright and cheerful. Open all the blinds to allow as much light in as possible and replace all the burnt or missing light bulbs. If you decide to paint, choose a light neutral color. Your home should also lightly smell nice and clean. Use common sense. Don't fry bacon or smoke in the house the day of your showing, but also don't spray too much fragrance. Some people are very sensitive or even allergic to air fresheners. Simply cleaning the house and maybe burning a couple of well-placed candles should do the trick. Your pets and their areas should also be clean and odor free. Marketing your home properly will help ensure you get the highest possible offer in the shortest amount of time. The laws of supply and demand apply here. The higher the demand for your property, the higher the price you can expect to receive. This chart shows the national average of how buyers find the properties they buy. As you see, the largest number of buyers find their property through the help of a real estate professional like me. Although you might miss out on about half of these potential buyers, you can still effectively focus on the other half. An effective marketing plan should include signs. Buy signs and install them where they can easily be seen from the street. You may want to have a sign at every busy intersection in the neighborhood. This really increases the awareness about your home. Newspaper. Place an ad in the local newspaper. Include general information without too many details about your house. Include items unique to the property like a view, pool, or fully furnished. Open house. An open house is when you invite anyone and everyone to walk through your house at a designated date and time. You'll want to provide some flyers for them to take with you. Include the bedrooms and bathrooms, square footage, and those items unique to your home, like a new roof or a new air conditioning unit. The third point answers the question concerning the actual showing of the property. Once you get an appointment to show your home, what should you do? Qualify the buyer before you invite them into your home. The most important reason to qualify the buyer is for your family's safety. Keep in mind, when your house is on the market, anyone can knock on your door when you least expect it. When they do call for an appointment, you'll have the chance to qualify them by phone. Never show your home alone. Consider having at least two others with you when taking potential buyers into your home. How should I show my home? When sellers meet buyers directly, it usually reduces the seller's effectiveness when negotiating with a buyer. If you have a lot of pride in your property, you're probably the worst person to show your home to a potential buyer. If a buyer makes a negative comment about your home, your first impulse is to be insulted or maybe even get angry. In either case, you may have lost the person that might have bought your home. Remember, they are just people, some polite and some just plain rude. All buyers will have real objections to any property. The process of successfully selling any home is to answering and explaining those objectives. If you can accomplish this, you'll probably sell your home. This is why when real estate professionals show houses, we prefer that the sellers not be present so we can speak openly of any objection a potential buyer might have and eventually overcome the objection. So remember, always be nice. Even if they insult you, just turn the other cheek. And that goes with negotiating the price as well. After all, it's the buyer's objective to get you to the lowest possible price. How much could it cost me to sell my own home? I view cost in several different ways. First, time. Second, effort. Third, and finally, real money expenses, including any payments you have to make while your house is on the market. First of all, be prepared to spend a lot of time selling your home. You can expect many phone calls at all hours and you must be available to talk to them. If you won't be home, forward the calls to your work and if you cannot be available, forward the calls elsewhere and have someone designated to answer those calls. Do not rely on your voicemail. By the time you return the call, that potential buyer might be negotiating on another property. It's always necessary to sort out or qualify the person calling you. Not only is there that security risk, every time you show your home, but it wastes your valuable time. There are a lot of reasons you will get calls from your for sale by owner sign. First, there are bargain hunters. Usually trying to invest, these people will get you interested, string you along, and eventually make you a verbal offer much less than your asking price. 
Second, there are lookers. People who have nothing better to do than spend your time looking at homes just for the fun of it and have no intention of buying. Third, there are other sellers. These people are thinking about putting their house on the market, but first they want to check out the competition. Then there are unqualified buyers. These people often have good intentions, but do not qualify for your home. This type of buyer can have the biggest cost to you. They might even make you an offer and you'd accept it. Now your house is off the market, sometimes weeks or even months until their financing is eventually turned down. Fifth and finally, there will hopefully be the real qualified buyer. Establish a relationship with a local home mortgage lender like Todd Craig with Nova Home Loans. You can call Todd anytime at 928-920-0951 to pre-qualify your buyers free of charge right over the phone. Now most people have heard the term time is money and for each hour you waste spending your time with unqualified buyers, it's time that could be spent with friends and family, working, or just doing the things you love to do. Now it's impossible to put a cost on the inconvenience of all these interruptions and the cost will vary depending on each individual and how much they value their time. Now let's look at the cost of selling your house on your own. The cost of a good sign or signs, the cost to keep an ad in the newspaper running the entire duration, the cost of layout and printing a good flyer plus the additional cost of your open houses. Some other real costs that most sellers forget about is how much longer it will take to sell your house by yourself. Let's say you're lucky and it only takes you one extra month longer to sell your house on your own. You must consider the loss of equity and the monthly interest paid on that loan or loans until the house sells. Now, while there are certain seller specific closing costs and buyer specific closing costs, all costs can be negotiated. So be sure and employ a reputable title and escrow company like First American Title so they can determine these costs for you and prepare all the necessary documents. Now, whether your house is sold by yourself or eventually sold by a professional like me, consider the value of having your personal belongings packed and moved professionally by a reputable moving company like United Horizon. Now I hope you learned something about the local real estate market and these tips designed to help you sell your home. Now if you'd like to contact me regarding listing your house with me and those benefits, feel free to call my office or visit SeanAllen.com. Now good luck.